And he's moving his way through the final corners and onto the straight. It looks like it's going to be a close finish. And he takes the checkered flag. Oh, hey, do you ever wonder how this front suspension and steering on an MGB works? Stick around and find out. Welcome to another episode of Maggie's Makeover. For those of you returning, welcome back. For those of you who are new, welcome aboard. The next step in Maggie's restoration is the complete teardown of her front suspension and steering, including the front suspension cross member. Before we contemplate any of that, we have to know what are those components, how do they go together, and how do they function? You know, mechanic Steve has been spending hours studying all of this. Let's head down to the garage so he can give us the basics of how an MGB front suspension works and how it's put together. Huh. So that's how the thingamajig gets screwed into the whatchamacallit and fits into the... Oh, hey, I didn't know that we were filming. Thanks for a great handoff, Studio Steve, and welcome back to the garage, everybody. You're probably wondering, what are all these racing tires doing around Maggie? No, they're not for her. These are part of the Whiskey Chasers racing team, which I'm a member of. April is a magical time because all the consumables for the entire race season just start showing up at the, up at the garage. And throughout the whole spring, summer, fall, they just magically appear. It's going to get crowded in here, but don't worry. We're going to work around it. So as Studio Steve said, Maggie's been up on jack stands for over 40 out of her 50 years of existence. The front suspension component has a lot of pieces like your body parts in that if you don't use them, you're going to lose them. So our restoration requires the whole teardown of that front suspension and rebuilding of it. So what I hope to accomplish is to get you up close and in front of all the different components that make up of that front suspension. And so you understand the simple yet functional elegance of that system as we rebuild it. So let's take a look at what those components look like on paper. Here's a diagram of Maggie's front suspension with the components listed in the table on the left. Starting at the top of that table and working downward, perhaps the largest component is the front suspension cross member shown in yellow. Attached to the front suspension cross member on either side is the wishbone assembly in orange. Those are made up of the wishbone arms 11 and 12 and the spring pan number 13. They are connected to the front suspension cross member through the pivot pin, which is shown in red, which is number 16. Sandwiched in between the wishbone assemblies and the front suspension cross member are the coil springs number 14. Mounted on top of the suspension cross member on either side is a set of lever shock absorbers shown in violet as part number 23. Attached to those lever shock absorbers and the lower wishbone assembly is the swivel assembly outlined in black and labeled part C. Attached to the spindle of each swivel assembly are a set of wheel hubs and bearings shown in light purple and denoted by parts number 59 through 64. Attached to the front suspension cross member are a pair of bump stops shown in blue and labeled number 18. They limit the vertical travel of each of the swivel assemblies. And finally, the front torsion or sway bar is shown in purple as item number one. This torsion or sway bar is connected to the lower wishbone assemblies through control links, which are part number three shown in teal. The steering rack is actually bolted to the front suspension cross member on the mounting blocks that are angled at 45 degrees. The tie rod ends of the steering rack shown in light blue and labeled part number 18 are connected to the control arms of the swivel assembly shown in brown and labeled part number 20. 
Collectively, all of these parts comprise Maggie's front suspension and steering assembly. What does it look like actually in the car? The first component and one of the major ones is the front suspension cross member. It's this big hunk of metal that sits transverse to the car and is attached by these four bolts. It's this suspension component that all of the steering and other suspension components are mounted to. And we're actually going to drop this entire section when we tear down the uh, front suspension. Let's just say it's a sunny day out. You got the top down, you're cruising, you're coming up on a right hand turn. You're going to turn your steering wheel in a clockwise fashion. What does that do? That in, in turn will actually rotate this shaft, which is connected to the steering wheel in a clockwise fashion through this universal joint to the secondary shaft, which will turn in a clockwise direction, which then comes down to a rack and pinion setup that is mounted to the suspension cross frame, cross member by these four bolts. Inside of this, you guessed it, there is a rack and there is a pinion. That pinion gear is gonna rotate and move that rack over in this direction, extending the tie rod on the passenger side and contracting the tie rod on the driver's side. So let's go underneath the car and let's see what that's connected to and how that actually activates the steering. So here's a great view underneath the car and let me just get you oriented what you're seeing. This structure right in here is the front suspension cross member. Remember how I told you that that's attached by four bolts to the frame rails of the car? Well, this is the actual driver's side frame rail. This is the passenger side frame rail. And then right here is the rack and pinion setup that we talked about that's integral into the steering of the car. Now, right up here, this bar, this is a torsion bar. Keep that as a frame of reference. We'll talk about that a little bit further on. So here's a view of Maggie's passenger side front suspension and steering components. Here's the tie rod piece of the rack and pinion that's connected to this arm of a, something called a swivel assembly. Now, why do they call it a swivel assembly? That's because it has this big pin, the king pin, running up through the center of it. And when the rack and pinion activates this tie rod, either in or out, this arm is allowed to swivel or rotate around the vertical axis of this kingpin, thereby turning the tire. So what keeps a swivel assembly in place? Well, you can see right here, it's attached to something called a wishbone assembly by a bolt that goes through that and the swivel assembly. Now on the inner side, you can see that that wishbone assembly is attached to the front suspension cross member through this pivot bolt. Suspension standpoint of view, this wishbone assembly, this end of it moves up and down as the car travels down the road, pivoting on the pivot pin. And to counteract that, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a coil spring in here that provides some stiffness that's anchored into the front suspension cross member and this spring pan of the lower wishbone assembly. So remember Maggie's torsion bar that I showed you? Well, here's the end of that. If you follow it, it's connected to the wishbone assembly by this torsion bar link. Now, as Maggie's driving down the road and the wishbone is going up and down as she's absorbing the, uh, the bumps in the road, that torsion bar is loaded and provides the roll resistance to Maggie's ride. Another key component of the front suspension are these bump stops. You can see these rubber pads are actually mounted to the front suspension cross member and they actually limit the travel of the front suspension wishbone. A lot of the attachment points um, of the front suspension have bushings in them. There are rubber bushings in here and in here. And similarly, on the inner part, the outer part of the wishbone assembly, 
where the swivel assembly goes through, there's a big bushing that's right in there. And I think you can see as we look at these, these are pretty worn and are gonna need to be uh, replaced. Okay, so we took a look at the suspension and steering components from underneath the car, but I think we need to take this tire off to get you a better view of the top of the swivel assembly uh, that has the kingpin in it and also the shock absorbers. So let's take this tire off and give you a better view. Okay, so now that we have the tire off and I have a closer view for you, let me get you oriented from the view that you saw before under the car to this view. Here's the rack and pinion uh, setup right here, that assembly, which is connected to the tie rod, which comes out to a ball joint. This is the uh, front sway bar, which is connected to the sway bar link. Now, what you couldn't see before that you can see now is the top of the kingpin and how that's bolted with a and secured with a cotter pin into the top of the swivel assembly and how that swivel assembly is bolted to a lever shock absorber that you can see right here. Now, this rotor is connected to the front hub uh, and actually spins with the tire. It is allowed to do so because there's a set of wheel bearings in here that mate with the spindle on the swivel assembly. So that's a high level tutorial on the MGB front suspension and steering assemblies, the different components, how they're assembled and how they work. Back to you, Studio Steve. Hey, thanks Mechanic Steve, and that's a wrap for this episode of Maggie's Makeover. Hopefully everybody got a thorough understanding of how the front suspension and steering on an MGB is assembled, and more importantly, how it works. Stay tuned for our next episode where Mechanic Steve starts to tear it all down. So until then, from Maggie and I, happy motoring. All right, let's see if the microphone's working. Test, test. How's this look for a shot? Man, these lights are bright. All right. As Studio Steve mentioned to you, Maggie's been up on jack stands for 40 out of her 52, 51 years. And that's not good for a car. You know, suspension parts are like body parts. If you don't lose them, you... <laughs> if you don't lose them, you lose them. Okay, so this is the uh, teardown approach shot. I'm probably standing out. My head's probably out of the view. I think I'll probably uh, do this by leaning down uh, like this. Um, probably, yeah, I'll, I'll hold the gun in my hand and uh, go through the steps of the teardown. This way I'll look like I know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs>